What's going on? We're going to talk about making a usable map of your property using custom Google Maps. We're going to talk about why I need it, how I made it, and what to do after it's made. All right, let's talk about why I need it. I need it because it's gonna be a great starting point for the piece of property that we just bought. It gives us the ability to start planning based on an actual scaled map of where we're gonna put buildings and, and what we need to avoid. As you can see on this map, there's a couple washes that are going through and we have to stay away from those. Um, it's one of the few building codes in our area is that you have to be a certain number of feet from the washes before you can build any structures. So, um, this gives us an ability to plan that out. It's going to also give us the ability to see progress over time as we add more things to this map and that kind of uh, thing. So it, it'll be a useful tool in the long run as well as the short term. So the other thing is, is it's really cool. It's It's got a good cool factor that you can say, hey, this is, this is a satellite photo, an actual two-scale map with GPS coordinates of where things are on our property. So if... I missed anything in that list. If you think that there's some other phenomenal uses for doing this kind of a map, please take some time and comment down below and let me know what kind of ideas um, you would use for this prop or for this uh, this technique. Let's talk about some of the requirements that you need to be able to create this. You have to have a Google account and you must be signed into that Google account to be able to get to the menus that I'm describing. I used uh, Microsoft Edge to film this video and to actually do mine. I'm sure that it works on other platforms like, you know, Chrome, all those other ones, but I, I just haven't tested them and I made this video for Edge. So let's get into it. I use these four phases. These don't have to be your phases. Um, I created the map. I created property lines. I then went in and put a development area for pro for lines that I was going to use and then after the fact I made it look pretty. So here I go, I'm going to get into it and try to talk you through some of the steps that I'm that I used. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this whole operation, right? In my case, I was able to get the GPS coordinates for the corners off of the county website, which isn't always the case. So I'm going to go like you don't know those corners yet. So I'm going to use Google Maps to find the corners of a specific mountain that's in the Superstition mountain range, right? Which is a little bit east of Phoenix. So if we come in here, right here is the Superstition Mountains. If I zoom in and flip over to the satellite image, let's say that I bought, you know, this mountain right here. So to find the coordinates, I'm going to click here, and down at the bottom, it's going to give this pop-up. If you click on this picture, don't click over here because it'll zoom in, but if you click on this picture right here, then come over here and drag your cursor, click and drag over this coordinate, you can copy those coordinates. So in my case, I'm going to do Control-C, but also you can do... You can two click and then copy here. So then the other corner that we want to get is right here. So if I click right here, okay, I had to click twice, but so then it dropped a pin there and we can come over here and do the same process, but first we need a place to put those. So let's do notepad. And let's paste that first coordinate in, and then let's come back over here to Google Maps. Click this picture again. You don't want to click that or it'll zoom in, and then highlight your GPS coordinates. I'm doing Control-C, but again, you can right-click and copy, and then let's post that in here as well. All right, I apologize if you hear wind in the background. It is super windy here right now. So anyway, let's move to the next steps, which are to format this the way that Google likes and add the second two points to get the four corners. So first thing we're going to do is remove these spaces. One is there. The other one is there. We're going to insert 
insert our header lines, which gives us the format that Google likes, right? Name, latitude, longitude, no spaces. Um, you can type these in. I just pasted it because I had it stuck to my clipboard already. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add names to these points. So this is the northwest corner. And this one here would be the southeast corner. And then we need to add our other two corners in, which would be the northeast corner and the southeast, southwest corner. And then from previous times that I've done this, I already know that the northwest corner and the northeast corner are going to share the same latitude coordinates. And likewise, these are going to share the same. And what I did was I copied and pasted. Um, I was just using keyboard shortcuts because it's quicker. But if you're going to do it the manual way, then we know that this northwest corner is going to share the longitude line with the southwest corner. And then to do it the manual way, you would highlight it, right click, copy, and then come up here right click whoa, right click paste so now we have our coordinates that we need for the um to make the square of the property so let's go ahead and make this custom map now uh, let's save this first before we uh, mess it up so if you do save and then pick wherever you're going to save. You can put it in whatever folder that you want. In my case, I'm just going to stick it on the desktop. And then for the save as type, you need to pick all files and name it property boundaries. Let's say property boundaries. That's not how you spell boundaries. Boundaries dot CSV. This part is important. It needs to end in dot CSV. And again, it won't let you do that unless you click all files. Click save, and then let's go on to the next step, which is to load this into Google Maps. All right, the next steps are to create a map and import these four corners in. So if I come over here to Google, and I, again, I'm at Google Maps, and then I click the menu, and then come down to your places, and then I'll click on Maps and create a map down at the bottom. This is going to create a blank map, and then you can import that CSV that we created in the steps earlier. So if I click the Import button, then Select File from Device. I saved mine to the desktop, so I'll go ahead and click on the desktop, and then I'll scroll down to file the fi find the file, which is PropertyBoundaries.csv. And then it's asking how you want to position them, which for us is latitude, longitude. And then it's going to ask what you want to title it. So we're going to select name and then click finish. And it's going to import those four points in and zoom in. The next step is let's switch it over to satellite. And then let's say we're going to build a house on the top. We're going to develop this area and build a top uh, house right here at the top. To get those, we're going to come in here, we're going to add a marker, we're going to do the same thing we did on the last one, and click one of the corners just to get latitude and longitude, except for this time, we already know how to format this in, in our case. So we're getting the north, we're going to get the northwest corner first, so if I come down here, and in my case I'm going to type it, well I'm going to actually copy and paste it, but you can stack it like this and, and uh, and type it in manually, but right click. And then come in here and copy that. All right, so we have the north, oops, I forgot a comma. So let me go back and put the comma. And then we need to find a southeast corner, just like we did in the other process. In which case, I'm just going to move this one. And then it's going to give us the updated coordinates, which copy that. 
paste it. Copy that. Oh, and you I missed the minus symbol. Okay, so that was the southeast corner. Let's call it pad. Let's call them pads uh, instead of corners so we can know the difference between the two. Sorry about my typing woes here. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did last time and do a northeast pad, do a southwest pad. All right, and then we're instead of doing save, well, I guess we could just do save and re-import the same one, but I'm going to do save as and call this pad boundaries instead of property boundaries. And again, don't forget to change it to all files. And then we're going to come back over here. We're going to delete the point that we were messing around with. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to add a layer and then import this next uh, file that we created. I must have missed it. There it is right there, pad boundaries. We're going to open it. We're going to do the same steps, coordinates and name, and then click finish. And it should draw the boundary that we created inside. If it doesn't, that means I messed something up. And there we go. So the next thing that I would do personally is I would start making it pretty, do things like changing the color of this to, if you click on a point, you can come in here and change the color of those points so they show different. So maybe the inside, let's do all red because it seems like the right thing to do. That's perfect. And then, you know, so now we have both those. And then you can come in here if you want to know the space in here or actually put some boundary lines. If you click on this button right here that says draw a line, it'll give you the ability to start drawing out a shape. So if I want to go from there to there, and all I'm doing is a normal click right now. Just one single click on the corners and then go to the next corner and then click. And now we just named it. So this would be property. In which case we know that it's 5.36 square miles. And then let's see. Let's do the same thing for the inner. Single click. Then we have a second one, which would be the pad boundaries. And we know that it's 183 acres or 2.15 mile perimeter. Those are some cool things that, that you can figure out how big your property is and that kind of thing as well. So, Or how big you're going to develop. Um, but this is extremely useful and you can go in and you can make it look cooler and customized you can actually come in here and change the styles to show um, show the labels as names um, which is what I did to make it make it easier for me to actually see what corners I put on the map and that kind of thing so now it's saying that this is the pad boundary and this is the property boundary um, but you know hopefully this tutorial is useful for you all right so what to do next um, 
For me, I'm going to continue to update this as soon as we start adding things. I may even do a second one that's a more detailed one for the actual plan of where we're going to put our buildings and all that. Um, I actually have to go out and do a site survey of this property to verify these corners. Um, and then the other thing is show off your hard work. You know, if somebody asks you, oh, well, how big is your property or what, what, what's your property look like kind of thing how's it laid out now you have something that you have that's to scale that you can present to them and say hey this is what we've got going on um i'd like to thank you guys for watching the video i know it drug drug on a little bit um if you like what you see if it helps then go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe because we really need the help to grow the channel thanks a lot bye